Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to give you guys 10 solid reasons to use DaVinci Resolve 16 in order to edit your videos. So putting aside the fact that the free version has most of the features included out of the box, let's actually get into the details. So first reason, it has a really nice selection of default special effects that you can apply to your video clips, including light rays and the vignette effect. So putting basic video transitions aside, DaVinci Resolve has a lot of these open effects that you can throw on top of a video clip in order to change how that clip is going to appear in your final video. So when you're in Resolve, if you go up to the effects library and open effects, you'll find different effects you can throw on top of a video clip, including Resolve Effects Blur for obviously blurring out a clip in different ways, color effects which can do things like flipping the colors of everything on the screen with the invert color function, light effects which allow you to add things like a glow or as I previously mentioned light rays which can generate rays of light from the brightest areas in your video shot, and then going down a lot of other categories like stylize, you have the watercolor effect which can take your normal video clip and making it appear as if it is a watercolor painting. So there's a lot of other effects to play around with in there and one of the nice things about it is that most of those effects have a lot of settings you can play around with in order to customize exactly how it's going to look to your liking. Reason number two, you can make your own custom titles inside of DaVinci Resolve. So this is generally going to be done over on the Fusion page editor when you want to make something really nice using the node graph. But if you prefer to keep it relatively simple, then you can just throw a text plus title onto one of your video tracks, generally the track above your main video clip. And that in itself is pretty customizable out of the box. Also, you have a bunch of title templates that you can throw up on your video, and you can also edit those as well, either by using the settings that are exposed in the inspector on the edit page, or once again going over to the fusion page and making them your own using the node graph editor. Reason number three, DaVinci Resolve has a lot of powerful features for doing color correction. So they have an entire tab for doing this in DaVinci Resolve called the color page. And you can go over there, there's color wheels you can use to adjust the base colors of your clip. You could also apply a color lookup table onto any of your clips. And a lot of the lookup tables that exist out of the box could give you a really quick look and feel for your video based on predefined settings. Another option in Resolve is to use the auto color tool, which can basically just look at any clip and it will automatically try to optimize the colors for that clip, generally making it look a lot more vivid. For that, you don't even need to go into the color page and work around there. You can just hit Control, Alt, and C on your keyboard with a clip selected or go up to the color menu when you're working in the edit page. Reason number four, it's easy to do green screen editing inside of Resolve. So there's multiple ways to do this. It is possible to do it on the color page, uh, but generally I think my preferred way to do it now is to use nodes on the fusion page editor. So specifically, the one you need to connect in order to mask out a color would be to use a keyer, which you can find by right clicking, going to add tool and then matte and then pick one of the keyers out. So Delta Keyer works. I believe Ultra Keyer is also an option there. And then by selecting the green color or another color you wanna filter out on the screen, removing the green screen part out and allowing you to fill in the void with pretty much whatever you want. So reason number five, you can do masks in DaVinci Resolve, which are very handy for creating things like a blurred face effect, something that is really common for doing. Side note to go along with that, there are also tracker tools. So if you need to track a face, that's also possible to go alongside that. But as far as masking goes, DaVinci Resolve does give you a lot of tools to accomplish the job, such as power windows. So if you want to selectively choose part of the screen that you need to remove or isolate, you can do that by defining a region with power windows, which can be a shape or can also be a complex pin selection. And then by taking those power window selections and having them serve as a mask, you can basically separate your clip into two sections, one that is inside the window and one one that is outside of it. Beyond just blurring out a face, another example of what you can do with that is to splice in an extra object such as a title and give it the illusion that it is hiding behind something like a tree by using a three layer setup. 
the topmost layer being where you have the mask, the middlemost layer being the title, and then the bottommost layer being the top clip, but the original with no masking. So, reason number six, the Node Graph Editor lets you make many video effects from scratch. So I've obviously already made a couple mentions about nodes, but if you really want to edit video seriously and resolve, then the Node Graph Editor becomes a really important part. Uh, basically, you can think of the Node Graph as uh, visual programming in a sense. So rather than writing lines of code, what you do is you add nodes that have certain functions to a graph, basically just a place to store all of these square nodes, and then they have certain inputs and outputs. So in order to achieve creating a effect, what you do is that you add the right nodes in, and then you just need to make sure that for each node, that they have the right inputs and that their outputs are feeding into the right nodes. Now, uh, that maybe makes it a little bit oversimplified, but the basic idea is there. So for instance, if you wanted to take an image and break it apart using particles, then what you would need to do is to have an image as an input node and have the output of that connect into a particle image emitter, which will eventually need to be sent to a particle renderer. And then that gets fed to your final output, the media out. And then that with mixing in some other particle related nodes to control the movement of the particles would get you your effect. Now, obviously, I already have a tutorial for that idea on my channel, but that just gives you one idea of what you can do with the Fusion page and the Node Graph Editor. A lot of other possibilities exist, such as reason number seven. DaVinci Resolve allows you to work with 3D objects, 3D models, 3D text, and that also includes lighting and shadows. So if you've ever seen a program, a 3D modeling program like Blender, it's very similar to that. You can't directly create 3D models inside of DaVinci Resolve, but you can definitely import them into the program. So if you wanted to create a 3D scene or add 3D objects as part of your video, then you can bring those into DaVinci Resolve for you to use. But an even more common example would just be creating a 3D text effects. So if you wanted to create a 3D title that can receive lighting and both the lights and the title are able to move around in three dimensional space before you render them to a 2D image as all video is in the end, then that is very doable inside of DaVinci Resolve and you have a lot of tools to do that. Once again, mostly over on the Fusion page editor. But if you look at the default title templates inside of Resolve that are available for you, you'll notice that they're called Fusion Titles. All of those titles under that category are actually 3D titles. So those are title templates you can use and edit. Some of them are pretty simple and some of them are pretty complicated, but they are a pretty decent place to start if you are looking to add a title screen to your video. Reason number eight, DaVinci Resolve has a robust property animation system. So if you use any animation software, then the concept is probably already familiar to you, but you can control or animate the properties in DaVinci Resolve, and almost every property can actually be animated uh, by using keyframing. So with keyframing, you basically have a set point in time, a single frame, that a value is set for a property, like the position or zoom of a video clip, for instance. And then if you have another keyframe set, then the value at that point in time, that different frame that you've selected and added a second keyframe to, is going to have the second value, the new one that you've created. And then if those values differ at all, then DaVinci Resolve is automatically going to increase or decrease the value between those two keyframe points in order to animate it. So if you have a zoom set to 1.0 or normal zoom, and then you have it set to 2.0 zoom later on, then that value is going to increase between those two keyframe points, which basically means that the zoom value animates upwards towards the second keyframe as time goes on, giving you basically animation. And as I mentioned, almost every property you see in DaVinci Resolve, whether you are just working on the edit page or if you go over to the node graph editor is, so the properties can have values that change over time, which gives you a lot of flexibility in working inside of Resolve. So reason number nine, Resolve has its own free sound effect library. So if you go over to the Fairlight page inside of uh, modern versions of Resolve, I think it came in 16.2, then you can open up the sound library tab and it'll say, click here to download the free sound effect library. So you do that, you install it, and then you can start using all of those sound effects inside of your video project. So with the version I have installed currently, there are 515 sound effects inside of that package. 
So that could definitely save you a lot of time if you're just looking for some quick sound effects that you can throw into your videos as you're making them. And then if you'd like, you can use the sound library feature on the Fairlight tab in order to search through all of those sound effects. Alternatively, they do actually install to a place on your hard drive, so you can just find the location for that and uh, grab them manually if you prefer. Okay, so reason number 10, and I think I would consider this kind of a necessity for modern video editors, but it is VST plugin compatible. So if you want to use Resolve with a third party audio plugin, generally speaking, you can. So with the VST plugin format, you can take external tools such as Era 4 or Reaper filters and you can actually use them inside of DaVinci Resolve. So if you want to apply one of those filters to an entire video track or a single audio clip, uh, you can do that quite easily. Um, generally, you will do all of that work over on the Fairlight page, which is the audio editing part of Resolve. Okay, so that is going to be it for my top 10 reasons to use DaVinci Resolve in order to edit your videos. So basically, when you're considering all of these features in mind, keep in mind all of that that I'm talking about is pretty much in the free version. There are a few special effects on the open effects that you do need the pro version of Resolve for, but most features are available out of the box even in the free version. So regardless of what computer operating system you're using, either Windows, Mac, or Linux, you can try out DaVinci Resolve because it's cross-platform. So I definitely recommend you guys give it a shot if you haven't already. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.